Good boy Reefers, I'm Daniel, this is Coralus, and I'm explaining to you guys today the quick ins and outs of aquarium plumbing. Uh, there's a lot of different things you need to know. Most people don't really do their own, but if you're one of those DIY guys, then this video is for you. So I'm going to show you right off the bat the difference between the bulkheads and the uniseals, or uniseal, whatever, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, and this is one of them. This is a uniseal. And this is the bulkhead. Now this is a monster one, but at least you can see. And this is screw on. The nice thing about this is a slip slip. So you can actually glue it and slide your pipe right in without any threads. So actually I like this. Whenever I use a bulkhead, I always try to find the slip slip because it's easier for me to glue and I know I'm going to use a union anyway and the unions come in handy whenever you have a pump that dies if you glue something in permanently and it's PVC right in as you can see here I basically have that screwed right on so if I plumb this in and glued it the pump is stuck in there so you'd have to cut that so by putting a union in you can actually remove it and take that piece out without cutting or destroying the pipe. So that comes in handy a lot of times. And one of the things I wanted to say, I'm using this, this is a high quality one. Uh, you'll see the difference out there. These are your local Lowe's quality. And if you've ever tried to turn one of these after about even a month of using it, or even right out of the, um, off the shelf, you'll almost break your tank, especially if you have a bulkhead and it's not mounted, just trying to turn this valve. So going with a higher quality piece, a lot of people invest a ton of money in your tank and I say when it comes to plumbing, don't be cheap because you'll thank me later on. And this one has a union built into it, so not only is it a valve, but it's got a nice handle and you can take it apart. So if you have a reactor for carbon or GFO, that really comes in handy. <clears throat> so I recommend always mount one of these right after your pump. And there's that. So let me see what else I'm going to say here. So here's a really cool looking one. Um, and if you guys hear sanding in the background, that is Christian. He's working on these pliers. He's cleaning them up for me real quick. <laughs> because what we're going to do next is take this plasti dip and we're going to coat them. Salt water destroys everything. I always tell people there's like many levels of uh, stainless steel. So you'll see something labeled stainless steel, but then the salts in the water will just corrode and destroy that. So if you have any more questions about this, I'm kind of, I was talking off the top of my head and then I just started drifting. We are gonna drill this tank today and that's one of the things we're setting up for. So we're plumbing this in now and that's gonna be our sand waterfall tank. So make sure you guys subscribe and stay tuned for that if you haven't already. And this is basically all the pieces I collect plumbing. So I am gonna be very happy to have a plumbing section at the new store because I have stuff everywhere and it'll be nice to have it organized. But I recommend the higher quality pieces so if we can find a good distributor for them, those are what we will stock. But it's nice to be able to get filters if you're a DOI guy and you're making a refugium and you have an overflow um, stuff like this comes in handy because it's great uh, you don't get a clog and if you do you can rinse off the pressure doesn't back up on just one so those are really cool um, let's see what else pipe cutters uh, if you're watching this you probably already know what these are and you've used these before but these come in handy you always want to either that or a hacksaw comes in handy if you're just doing a one-off job and you don't want to spend the money and buy those just get a hacksaw blade it's the cheapest way to cut it cleanly and no worries there and also glue here's different types of cement this is a self priming um, PVC cement so you don't have to do the purple but those of you who have seen this purple it can be pretty messy especially if you're doing any plumbing vertically it drips down so then here's the clear cement but what we're gonna do now is prep this whole sole we're going to drill, uh, I mean, uh, a jig, thank you so much, a jig for this so we don't break the glass. 
So we're gonna go with that. And that'll be another video, guys, so stay tuned. But this one was more just for you guys, update on different things. Uh, unions are important when you're plumbing. Flappers are great. Something like this will keep your water from backflowing into your tank and overflowing a smaller setup. So there's my ramble. And Uniseal, if I didn't mention Uniseal, the reason I love that, it's so easy to use. It's flexible. If you're putting a pump somewhere on the end of a tank and you don't want to bulkhead and crack your glass, you're so much safer with this. If you're building a sump and you have a pipe going from one tank to another tank and you're doing some weird DIY project, You'll, sit, you'll save your life with the Uniseal because it'll flex a little, it won't crack. I split a tank in half because I bumped the PVC and it was bulkhead and it was so rigid that it just shattered the glass. If I had a Uniseal, never would have happened. So, all right, that's my ramble. Leave your questions in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Happy roofing. Stay tuned. Till the next one. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and share with a friend, and thank you for being part of the Coralus community.